The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 29th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. And I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up the phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. You can always send me an email. Send it off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magical, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a, a little bit of a mixed bag out there. you got most U.S. indices trading the upside. The stubborn one right now is the uh, semis. They're off about five points. Otherwise, Dow's trading up 74 points, two tenths, two cents for the S&P at 12 points, a little bit less than two tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 29 points, and seven tenths for the Russell. That's a 14-point move. You've got gold that's trading up a buck 50. Silver is down two cents. Light recruit is off a buck 12. 30-year treasury is up 23 ticks. And that's gas is up seven pennies trading out at 199 our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside is chipotle up 25 bucks or eight tenths percent mercado libre 25 bucks nearly two percent domino's pizza 21 bucks nearly five percent tesla $21, 12%. On my screen out here, if you're looking at my screen, you can see that beautiful three drive to a bottom pattern. I mean, it was exact. Nothing was forced. It was a beautiful pattern. And now you've got Tesla above a uh, short-term uh, trend line out there. So it looks like it does want to trade higher out there. Also trading the upside, you've got MicroStrategy up 23 bucks and Supermicro up 16. To the downside for second day in a row, it is Saya, the freight company, up 11 bucks. Kinsale Capital Group down 11 and change. Broadcom's off 11. As Mill Holdings down 11. Meta Platforms is down nine as well. So we got movers and we've got shakers out there. But let's begin our day. Well, first, let's begin our day with regard to what transpired on Friday. And what transpired on Friday is you've got two now A to B equal CD patterns to the upside. One in the ES Mini with a price projection of 51.87. That's an initial price projection. And the NQ initial price projection of 17.990. Trading inside the NQ, that is, trading inside its bearish structured uh, profile zone. The ES Mini, a close above 41.9. 51.40 today will um, go ahead and uh, take price above that resistance of the top of its profile. Now, we can see in the case of the spot volatile index, it is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is at 15.18. You close below that today, that'd be a second close. And that would suggest you could see a move down to 13.27. If we do that, we will see a rally continue inside the ES Mini. Why would we see a rally continue inside the S&P 500? You know, that's a great question out there, and here's the answer. If we take a look at 90 six years worth of history this red vertical line shows us where we are at today you can see a few days ago April 28th or so is when the S&P 500 typically forms its bottom. If we come back here, what we will see is that we had a buy the D point pattern form on April the 22nd out there. So it's sort of really in line with regard to the seasonal pattern. We'll take a look at where that seasonal pattern takes us to. We're familiar with the sell in May cycle out there. What I can share with you is on average, sell in May 
for the uh, S&P 500 begins between May 6, May 7, right in that time frame to May 8. So we're looking at a uh, short or a potential top out here. If price were to follow along this cycle pattern, that doesn't take place for a, a week or so. Not next week. Uh, no, sometime would be sometime next week out there, right? Uh, we got the 30th that will show up tomorrow, May 1st, the following day. Yeah, so it'll be next week that we that, wear that cycle. Now, that's 96 years. Somebody might say that's too much data. And I would say, okay, well, let's go see what 25 years worth of data shows us. Here's the 25 years worth of data. Here in, over the last decade, it would be May 2nd when that cycle begins. And if we go a little bit shorter than that, how about 15 years worth of data? It says that it should have formed already May 28th. So we know we're not following, at least at this stage here, we're not following the 15 year cycle plan. More likely than not, we are following along that 96 year glide path out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the S&P 500, the ES mini, the uh, NQ out there. But now let's go dive down into the details out here. If price is going to rally, let's start by taking a look at the NQ because price is trading inside it's bare structured cell zone. That's the uh, center and daily uh, profile levels. Where change windows? That can't happen there. Okay. So if you give me a moment here, we'll get to the white background screens. Now we've got the NQ charts up on, its, on our screen out here. The, the pattern that is the one to really be paying attention to, I'd say, comes from the five hour time frame chart. Now, what we saw this morning. Now, there's TD9 count tops that are in place on the five-hour time frame chart and even on the two-hour time frame chart. And that's really what the uh, price needs to close above. And I'm going to use the five-hour time frame chart as our real guideline because we can see you've got a TD9 count top right at the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. It's 17,968 out there. And as we take a look at it, uh, uh, the price level that price needs to close above to negate this pattern is going to be the high of 17,929. However, I do offer a bit of caution. Getting back to a breakout level can, in fact, be a resistance point. So what I'd really say here is even though you've got a TD9 count top that's in place and price could close above that eye and suggest that pattern is negated, I'd really like to see it close above 17.968. If we get that, first of all, at 17.990, uh, the daily time frame generates the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. We could probably take a look at that on the five-hour time frame chart. So we'll go with wave number seven signal. That's the low of the pattern out here. So we'll go from there up to basically a TD9 count top that formed and held price out there. And now let's copy and paste that line so we can see that this is, again, this is going to line right up with the daily A to B equals CD pattern. So I take that back. So this one takes us to above the 17.968 level. Let me see here. I started with April 19th. What's this? That was April 19th as well. That's odd. Let me see. April 19th. Yeah. Well, anyways, in any event out here, um, you've got this A to B equals. Oh, I know I did that. I know I did that. So you've got this A to B equals CD pattern that's going to take us right up into that 17,968.50 level out there. So that's why I watch. By the way, the move lower this morning inside the NQ, if price is going to move lower. We can take a look at just simply a 30 minute time frame chart out here. We can see that really since this bottom that formed out here. Back at about 11 o'clock in the morning, April the 25th, we can see a couple of TD9 count breakout levels, 17,853. So that flush lower to the downside was nothing more than a test of that level. So be aware of that level, which at 17,853.25. If we did see an NQ close below that, we should see a move back to the 17,668 area. But at this stage of the game, support is held. And the question is, will resistance fail? I don't know the answer to that. Neither do you. But if you pay attention to those numbers, we'll know soon enough. Take care. No, I'm just kidding. We'll be right back after this break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, now, folks. Let's get into the requests that have come in thus far. Again, I'd love to hear from you as well. Steve at TFN.com, 877-927-6648. Or thank you to all the dinners for uh, putting in some requests out here. Much appreciated. So let's start with the first one coming in from Nicholas this morning. Uh, he wants to take a look at ticker symbol NXT. And what he's looking for is an entry point out here. So let's take a look at the daily time frame chart first. The daily time frame chart on Friday confirmed a Rhodesmentum indicator bottom pattern. Did that when it generated that bullish engulfing candle. Now, price is below profile support, but a close today above 43.93. A close above 43.93, Nicholas, is going to at least suggest that price gets back to its most recent swing point high. That swing point high is at 46.08. The volume on that day was 2.5 million shares. So far today, you've done 657 in less than two hours of trading. So it does look like you're coming to that swing point with lighter volume, but price should be able to get up there. If it can clear that high, then you'd be looking at a move to the 47.27 level. At the same time, this was forming a, a, a Rhodesmith indicator bottom. We had price testing profile support on the weekly time frame. So that seems like a pretty solid bottom at this stage of the game. You're looking for an entry point. You know, it could be here. You know, you. I mean, the number of different ways to try to play this. If I pull over a 30 minute time frame chart, 30-minute chart says, you know, I haven't crossed over 45.66. And there's a TD9 count top slightly above that at the 46.08 level. So, um, you know, I don't see any patterns out here. Maybe price pulls back to 43.79 or 44.12. Um, you know, we'd really have to get down to a granular intraday chart to really try to. And then the question is, can you even... So, so if you're looking for an entry point, you'd have to say it's basically about now inside of this instrument. Of course, you could get it on a pullback, but you'd sure like to see it hold. You know, maybe you wait to see, does it hold that 43.93 level today? If it closes below that, you probably can pick it up at a little bit lighter price out there. So that's NXT, which is Next Tracker Inc. Uh, you also want to take a look at Workday, W-D-A-Y. 
So let's pull that up. You're also looking for an entry point here. Now, we can see in this case here on the daily time frame, a Rhodesman to indicator bottom was triggered this morning. So that requires a bullish reversal candle. We're trading below profile. We're trading below the oscillator and change line. So this still can head lower. Your first inclination that at least the daily time frame buyers are trying to form a bottom would be a bullish reversal candle. So you don't, you know, to give you a price level now, I wish I could, but we're trading below support on the daily time frame. Therefore, I can't. We're trading below support on the weekly time frame. And the weekly time frame has an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, let's see if the B point was taken out with volume. We'll still draw it in. But the uh, B point was the uh, week of March 10th, 2024. 20 million shares, nearly 21 million shares. When the B point was passed with 7 million shares. So lighter volume, but maybe this is setting up a Tiger Gartley. Nonetheless, prices closed below a swing point out there. And we've been below it for a couple of days now. This would be the third day so let's try to figure out where that a to b equals cd pattern could be taking us to and that says in about the 230 level out there with price below the um monthly oscillator and change line and a new profile that's got support at 212 it looks to me like what workday wants to do is continue to move lower the only thing that would get in the way of that or potentially get in the way would be some type of bullish reversal candle nicholas and that's not as we that, you know we don't see that as we speak right now so that's something for you to be watching for uh nicholas had an additional question so he's getting a three for really a four for but we're just going to keep it to a three for out there and that three for that's not even a word but it's one that stevie made up is he'd like to go take a look at the high volume low inside the queues and the S&P, but we're just going to stick with the queues out, the SPY that is, uh, from the trading day of April 19th. So let's open up the chart here. I think I'm back on the black background charts. I am. He's referring to this day right here. And that day is April 19th. It did 75 million shares. And his question is, will price get down there? Well, it might get back down there, but because it's a high volume day, in the case of the queues, that is not the meaning. No. In fact, if we take a look at all of the bottoms inside the queues, what you're going to see here is they happen on high volume days. For example, let's go back to October 26, 78 million shares traded hands that day. Someone might say, because that was a high volume low out there, that that would be tested. Has been tested yet. Maybe it'll be tested in the future. But again, if we take a look at bottoms inside of the queues, they happen to be made with high volume out there. That was something that we noticed years ago. Take a look at the bottom that formed out here on October 13th. October 13th, the volume there was 112 million shares out there. Again, Nicholas, if you take your chart and you go take a look at the daily bottoms that form inside of the QQQ series ETF, what you're going to see is they form bottoms. Now, sometimes they get retested. Sometimes they don't, but I would not live by the principle that a high volume bottom inside the queues means that it's going to get tested. It's just a pattern, but don't believe me. Go out there and do the work yourself. Take a look at it, and you're going to see what I see out there, and that is that high volume days at lows inside the queues tend to mark bottoms out there. I think you see the same thing in the SPY, but I'd really take a look at the queues out there. That's one that I've studied, and that's its signature pattern out there. So hope that helps you out, Nicholas, and everybody as well. Mr. Bill inside the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at the Japanese yen. His specific question is, was there some kind of signal that the Bank of Japan might take action or that there was some type of top out there? So let's pull open the yen charts. Now to do that, we're going to switch back to those white background charts. So if you give me a moment here, We'll get back to those. We're going to have the multi time frame charts for the Japanese yen. As we take a look at it, first of all, if we look at the monthly time frame, we do not have any kind of a topping signal. In fact, this is telling us that the yen wants to weaken even further against U.S. dollar as prices above its green oscillator and change line. We have that same condition inside of the weekly time frame chart. You can also see a very large A to B equals CD pattern. We're nowhere close to completing that one on the weekly time frame. Today is going to mark bar number seven. Now, you'll see a letter. G up there, but that's from a count that's a while ago, so it's really not a accurate, in my opinion, it's really not an accurate wave number seven signal out there. But we are in bar number seven on a weekly basis. You could get a TD9 count, Mr. Bill, that forms between next week and then the two weeks after that. So we could be looking at a top forming in about a month. We look at the daily time frame chart. The daily time frame chart also has an A to B equals CD pattern out here. This one is smaller than the weekly one, but you can see that price on Friday made that one to one price level. Just because you make the one to one does not mean that that is a top out there. Now, what we see today so far, Mr. Bills, we see a outside reversal bar. And 
That's as long as price closes one tick below where it opened last night. The open inside of the yen was up at the uh, one. 57.99 level. As long as price closes one tick below that, you have a key reversal bar that will confirm a sell the D point pattern. But the question is, is that a top? Well, wait a minute here, Stebo. You just said if it closes one tick below the open, that's going to form a sell the D point pattern. I did say that, and I meant that. But what we've also seen take place today is we have seen price test and so far reject that green oscillator and change line. And Mr. Bill, right now that's printed out at 155.94. Whenever an instrument makes a top, and today, right now as we speak, qualifies as a top because that key reversal bar, by the way, a key reversal bar needs three things. You need to be in extending condition. Well, when you're at the end of an A to B equals CD, we certainly are. You need to trade above and below the prior bars high and low, and you need to close in the opposite direction of the trend. So all those are in place, but you still have to close below a rising price oscillator above zero. And that's that green oscillator and change line. So it's really a neutral signal as we speak right now, Mr. Bill. Hope that helped you out with regard to the Japanese yen. I didn't see any other signals on intraday charts as well. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, the inaugural session of Live Trading Fridays with Larry Pesavento was a massive success. Trades were communicated, questions were answered, and money was made. Every second and fourth Friday of the month, from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time, Larry wants you to join him as he places live trades and takes your questions. That's right. With this monthly subscription, you receive access to two live trading events. We are gearing up for the next session Friday, April 26, so there's still time to sign up. For this month only, use code LARRYLIVE at checkout in order to secure $50 off your monthly subscription price for as long as you subscribe to the service. We'll see you next Friday, April 26, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, and folks. Let's go on to our next request. This is coming from John C. inside the Tiger's Den. And John would like to take a look at light speed crude. So let's pull up the multi time frame charts for light speed crude. On a monthly time frame, we're looking at the June contract. What we can see out here, John, is a consolidation, or at least we know where resistance is at. You have both a TD9 count monthly top out here. That was June of 2022. And we've got profile resistance. Profile resistance, 85.12. That TD9 count top, if price were able to close above on a monthly time frame, 88.15, we're off to the races to the upside. That's what the monthly chart is showing. Weekly chart does not have a uh, top out here, and you just have a consolidation with inside its profile. Support has been that green oscillator and change line, currently printed at 81.87. Below that, you've got 79.85, and finally, you've got a breakout level at 75.10. Resistance up at 85.78. Let's go to the daily time frame where we also have a consolidation with inside its profile. Price finding resistance in the daily time frame at its oscillator and change line on Friday. And now you've got a fairly decent sized profile out here. They've got a buy zone between 81.33 and 81.95 and a sell at the 85.72. When I say sell, I'm not saying sell. I'm saying that's where your sellers are located. But we can see that oscillator and chains on is acted as resistance. So those are sellers as well up at the 84.32 level out there. No other pattern. One additional place of support on the daily time frame is down at 79.99. So right now, consolidation on the monthly, consolidation on the weekly, consolidation on the daily time frame. How about an intraday period? What do we see out here? Let's see if we see anything worth noting. Well, everything's worth noting, but what do we see out here that might assist someone? So you had a TD9 count top on the 30-minute time frame chart. It looks like you've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside now. So let's just try to identify what that pattern looks like. So let's draw in our A to B line pretty close to it. Hammer candle. I'm just going to move this over here, John, to the C point, which is the top of that TD9 count pattern out there. And that gets us down towards... Not too much below where we're at, 82.38 out here. But you still need to get lower, and you do have support at a breakout level of 82.16. And with price on the C to D side, it is on the strong side. It's on the left side out here. Um, you know, you can, this, is gonna, this could easily do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals C D pattern to the downside. But it could also be generating over the course of the next hour and a half or so. It could form a TD9 count bottom. But on a 30-minute chart, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal as we speak out here. Um, <laughs> I do see 120 minute support at the uh, after TD9 count top at 82.34. So I watch 82.34 to the downside. If you close below that, that would suggest lower price. So I hope that provided you with the info you were looking for, John. If not, let me know, and I'll be happy to get back to you. We got another John inside the Tiger's Den. He likes to go by the name of Z out there, and he would like to take a look at the 30-year treasury. Specific question, does either a daily or weekly chart show a bottom? And it turns out that the daily time frame chart does. The daily time frame chart on Friday, I thought it had closed lows below the low of its buy the D point pattern. So this formed a buy the D point pattern back on April 17th. And then April 17th, bullish engulfing candle set up a resistance level, which was the low of the candles or candle in this case here, that price engulf. That was the low of April 16th, 113.10. If we take a look at Friday's close out here, 113.10. Got to love that. So what does that tell us? That says you still have a buy the D point pattern that is in place out here. The key area here with regard to the 30-year Treasury, John, is that uh, price has been unable to close above 114.81. But if we do the math conversion on that, what does that equate to in 30 seconds? About 114.26. If price can close above 114.26, because this is a bullish structured profile, you should see a rise up into the 116 area. The specific resistance point is at 116.10. So if price can clear that, then you're off to the races. But right now, you just have a, a bit of a consolidation with inside its daily profile out there uh, from two days ago. Uh, that was really just a one-hit wonder with one day below the bottom of that profile. Now, on a weekly time frame, there's a different answer. And that answer is no. There is no buy the D point pattern yet. You can see the one to one A to B equals CD. If we did get a bullish reversal candle at week's end, then you would have a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern there as well. So I'd watch the weekly, but I'd really watch the daily and I'd see how that handles that center of that profile. And again, that's at about the 114.26 level. If we price, price can close above that, you're likely headed into the 116.10 area. So Mr. Z, I hope that helps you out. And as always, thank you for your request. We've got another request for pearls inside the tiger's den. 
And Pearls would like to take a look at silver, high ho silver. So let's get over to its multi time frame chart. So we begin with the monthly chart. Monthly chart looks bullish to Stevie. Why is that? We're trading above profile resistance, and we are trading above a green oscillator and change line. Those are bullish conditions out there. Let's go take a look at the weekly time frame chart. And on a weekly basis, we've got a TD9 count top. A TD9 count top along with a new profile that is forming. That new profile has support down at 26.15. You've got really a support by zone, so to speak, somewhat wide, 26.15 to 27.52. And resistance up here is at 29.51. Of course, we know because it's got a TD9 count top, price must close above that high. That's the high from the week of April 12th, and that specific high is $30.19. That's where price needs to close above in order for silver to tell us it is back in its merry way. Otherwise, we have a TD9 count top with price consolidating with inside its profile. And on a daily time frame, what do we have out here? We have a sell the D point pattern, which I believe we do. Pull this back a little bit further. Yeah, we've got a sell the D point pattern. You've got a couple of them inside of uh, silver. Now, what needs to happen in order to negate that pattern, price would have to close above the high from April 16. That number's at 29.37. What we also have is a new profile in the case of silver that has formed. And so silver pearls now has support, and it's a support zone. It is a it is a uh, bullish structured support zone. And that, that support area is between 27.22 and 27.45. Your resistance level in silver is up at 28.14 out there. Now, what I would say is that if silver closes below its hammer candle low from April 23rd, that would be below profile support. We'd be closing below the low of a hammer. I would be watching 26.99 for any kind of hint that price wants to really make a further low with that further low targeting the 24.76 level. So that's what I see when we take a look at the daily, the weekly, and the monthly time frame charts for silver. Before we go to a breakout here, is there any other signals that we can see to assist us from an intraday standpoint? And really what I see out here mostly is a sideways consolidation. So the answer that Stevie has to that question, I don't really see anything else out here on a sideways, I'm sorry, on a intraday time period that's going to overcome, uh, that's going to change anything that we've already looked at. So with regard to silver, I'd be watching that 2722 level first, and the price for the close below that, watch the area of 2699. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We only have one more request. Well, I've got to take a look at what's come in by email out there, and that's for HBM for Sharky inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, 
Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's uh, go out to Martinez, California and speak with Brent. Brent, thanks for calling and thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Doing quite well, Steve, and you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And we want to take a look at ticker symbol STEM. Uh, tell the folks what it is and, and what you're thinking about and how I can help you. Well, I bought into this last week, and I did that because of that uh, TD9 count on the daily. Excellent. And then that, the day after that, it had that reversal candle, so I bought that day. And then it also, I want to say, is at the end of the week, I mean, that, of course, came after the fact, but... I believe it had a, a bullish engulfing candle that exceeded the low and the high of the previous week. And so there's a few things there I liked. And I just want to get your thoughts on it at this point and what areas to be watching, you know, to the upside and also the downside. I mean, I know where my stop is on the downside. So it's really more the upside. Sure, sure. So it's a beautiful uh, set of uh, charts, uh, Brent. When we take a look at the daily and the weekly time frame chart, as you as you identified, you've got both a uh, a daily TD nine count bottom as well as a road momentum indicator bottom because that bullish hammer candle that formed on the uh, let me use my cursor out here the day after the day that you bought it, which was April the twenty uh, second out there. Now, what we also have is we've got an A to B equals CD pattern, and that one to one takes us up. Pretty much to about where we're at right now. So we are trading above profile. Uh, today would be the second day above that. Um, so if you're achieving the one-to-one -one level, you would just now be watching to see if there was some type of bearish reversal candle. If you did get that, and you could potentially even get a bearish shooting star at day's end, what that would then be signaling to us, Brent, is that we should see some type of retracement. Now, the first level of a retracement that I would be looking at would be 171. I am not saying this is going to retrace to buck 71 right now. I'm saying if we did get a bearish shooting star candle, that would be its signal. Short of that, price should continue to motor on. And that motor on would be at 212. That's on the daily chart. But Brent, when our eyes go over and take a look at the weekly time frame chart, what we're going to see is right at about right where we're trading right now. The bottom of its weekly profile is 192. So if this is so you also, by the way, uh, last week was a combination of a TD9 count bottom, a um, Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom, and I see wave number seven on my screen as well. Now, it's not like three bottoms are better than two or better than one out there, but you did have multiple signals. So that's cool. But now what we also have are other signals, and that is where the battles are at. So we know there's a battle at 192, and we know there's a battle at 210. 
That was a bullish structured weekly profile. And that says that counter trend moves because price has been below the bottom of that weekly profile for more than two consecutive sessions. The price really needs to close above 210. 210 really be between 192 and 210 is where you would see a counter trend move out there. On a monthly time frame, which ends in two days out there, you're going to get bar number eight of a TD9 count. And it should this form a bullish reversal candle, let's say in the month of uh, May out there, that would give you a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Below profile on the monthly, uh, right now trading into profile on the uh, weekly and above profile on the daily. So we kind of have mixed messages there. I'm going to go with the daily right now as being, you know, you aware of the resistance on the weekly, but I'd be watching the daily out there. Any questions thus far, Brent? No, that's very good, Steve. I, I appreciate you taking a look at all that. I, I just it had enough going for it that I felt comfortable taking a trade at that uh, that day. And, and uh, of course, I'll be watching it as I always do. And that's really what I was looking for. You give me the numbers and I'll be Perfect. watching all that and see how it uh, how it plays out. Perfect. So on a 30 minute time frame chart, and that's what I've got up on our screen here, Brent. Uh, it looks like what we have is a sell the D point pattern that formed at 1130. So about uh, 15 minutes ago. So its first level of support on a pullback would be at a buck 85. Below that, you'd probably be looking at some type of retracement uh, Fibonacci number out there, because otherwise that would say you could get back to buck 69. But if price get back, tag, touch the 185 level, test and reject it, and then head higher and close above. In this case here, you just need a close above 190 to suggest, at least on a 30-minute basis, that it's worked to the downside is done and that it's ready to move higher out there. So, uh, STEM, what do they do, Brent? Um, you know? I know it's involved in, well, it's, it's actually based out of San Francisco. Oh, is it? I know okay. they're involved in. All this stuff is it's a little bit confusing to me, honestly. That's okay. I didn't, I didn't mean to put you on the spot thing, there, but my apologies. Yeah, I know yeah, it's yeah. involved in AI, and, and it's, it's a lot of like, uh, they do stuff with uh, solar power, you know, mm. some of that generation. There's just a lot okay. of like some of the clean energy type of stuff, I think, is what they're mainly involved in and, and monitoring that and just other aspects of that. Okay, well, look, good job for you in uh, spotting and identifying a uh, bottom. So you've tagged that, and now it's just really uh, can the buyers take out those sellers really in that sell zone on the weekly time frame. So uh, I hope that uh, unfolds for you, and it's always good to hear your voice, and thank you very much for your call, and I want you to have a, a great Monday and a great week. Well, you do the same, Steve. I appreciate it so much. This is what I've been watching for a while. I just try to do that with – I do a lot of searches over the weekend. This one that I've been following for quite a while. I just was waiting for it to make that bottom. It, it in my mind, did that, and so I, I took a shot at it. And so it absolutely, it absolutely so did. So yeah, thank you so good. much for your help. Just have yourself a great day and a great rest of your week. I'll you talk bet. To you, soon. you bet. Thanks for the call. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, let's go on to a Sharky inside the Tiger Zen. Why did I take like a tick symbol HBM? Let me see if I can find that here. That was close, but no cigar. I think it's right here in the number three slot. There we go. So we're taking like an HBM. And no questions specifically, so let's just do the normal review. When I look at the weekly time frame chart, what I see is a negated TD9 count top from last Friday. So that bodes well to a further move higher. The only thing you have to be concerned with here, and this is on uh, HUD, HUD Bay Minerals out there, is if you were to see a bearish reversal candle on a daily time frame, that would go ahead and confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, at least at the present time. That pattern can go away. But that's what we're looking at as we speak right now. It is the weekly time frame chart that suggests that you really watch that. And the reason is, Sharky, because you are going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top this week. It's really just almost the opposite of what Brent and I were looking at. However, in Brent's case, that had confirmed a bottom pattern, a couple bottom patterns there. So right now in a daily time frame, we don't have a confirmed top. But if you were to get a bearish reversal candle, that would at least suggest a retracement. Now, it could just be a retracement back to support. The first support level would be 829 on the daily time frame. But the weekly support level is down at about 750, 748 specifically as we speak. On a monthly time frame, what are we doing? Well, we're trading into a swing point. But let's open up the chart and take this thing back. So it's a swing point from the uh, month of uh, May of 2021. 38 million shares were traded that month. Price is trading inside there right now with 63 million shares. So this tells us 
that price wants to go tag that high. Now, that high is going to be in the 960 level out there. But remember, the weekly chart right now, I would say, has priority. But whatever the high of this week is, what you want to watch, Sharky, is if price begins trading above that, and especially if price closes above that, then this tells you that you are in a strong momentum move to the upside for the intermediate term time frame. The monthly will go tag that high, and the daily would presumably move higher as well. So I hope that helps you out, Sharky. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at the EWH for GTE, BHVN for Mohammed. Nicholas uh, wants to take a quick peek at uh, natural gas and Vic. We love you, too. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's take a look at uh, EWH for GTE. So the issue you're going to have with EWH is as it approaches resistance, that's up at the 1650, 1654, and 1672 levels. If you look at that monthly time frame chart, GTE, you can see that prices remain below the oscillator and change line for quite a while. That's at 1649, and just above that is the bottom of its profile, 1672. That is the fighting zone that price needs to overcome in order to suggest a further move higher out there. Uh, Mohammed wanted to take a look at ticker symbol BHVN, and if we take a look at BHVN, we can see that this formed a TD9 count bottom. It did that a couple of days ago, and price right now is taking on resistance. That first resistance level is the bottom of its 
daily profile. If price can clear the bottom of the profile, that's 39.22. You should see a move up to 41.18 or 42.24. Those would be your next levels out there. The weekly time frame does not have a bottom. The monthly time frame has a TD9 count top. But the TD9 count top has tested support or close to. That's at 36.19. To the downside, I'd be watching about 34.19, two dollars below that. If price were to close below that, then you're looking to move to 21.65 or 16.45. But the daily's got the bottom signal. The question is, can it take out any resistance levels? And the first one so far, it's failed at, and that's up at that. Uh, 39.22 level. Nicholas wanted to take a look at natural gas, which is rallying. It's trading with inside a sideways consolidation. Stevie doesn't have anything to suggest otherwise. We'll take a look at these charts out here. I don't have, well, you can see the daily sideways consolidation. So the interesting thing here is the weekly, uh, the 60 minute chart, I should say, which has a nice road momentum indicator, TD9 count bottom, has cleared resistance out here. I don't see any kind of a top. This suggests that price should continue to move higher. The real key level to be watching inside of natural gas for the June contract out here, Nicholas, is going to be the center of its profile. And that's at $2.12. Turns out $2.12 is the center of the weekly profile. It also is the top of its consolidation pattern. So if price can clear that, then natural gas is in place. Other in play. Otherwise, you just have a sideways consolidation. Folks, we got to everything, and that is a beautiful thing. So please have a magnificent and marvelous Monday. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, please uh, stay tuned for all the great programming, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Take care. Thanks, folks.